colonization never ended in the white supremacist system. And as we see today, the colonization is in the mind. Now, those who have been enslaved and those who have been colonized, we're still dealing with the remnants of that through the colonization of the mind. Pick up my book, Seven Steps to Decolonize the Mind, and we will help deprogram you from the colonization that was put upon you by generations and generations of white supremacy. You can pick it up today on Amazon.com. Greetings, brothers and sisters. My name is Osi, the Born Child. And today, I'd like to share with you the untold tale of Malie Louise, the first and the only queen of Haiti. Her story, like so many black women's stories of struggle and survival, has for so long been consigned to the margins of history. Yet, it is very worthy of commemoration. Researcher Dr. Nicole Wilson said of Malie Louise Christophe, the first and only queen of Haiti who lived in Britain in the early part of the 19th century. Wilson, who is a researcher from the University of Central Lancashire, made these comments following an announcement that Malie Louise, the first and only Caribbean lawyer to have lived in Britain, was going to be honored with a plaque at the 49 Weymouth Street, London, where she lived between 1821 and 1824. Not much had been known about Mali Louis's life in Britain until 2019, when Wilson unearthed a copy of Mali Louis's will in the UK National Archives with the will. Wilson was able to trace the Haitian Queen's movements in Britain and know more about her story. According to a report by the Voice newspaper, Wilson then established a working relationship with the Haitian Chamber of Commerce in, in Britain to seek support from the Nubian Jack Community Trust to elect a blue plaque at Mali Louise's former residence in Britain. The plaque of Mali Louise was unveiled on Monday in Melbourne with authorities hoping that it will be one of the many more plaques to redraw the balance and really highlight the role the BAM communities have played throughout the history of the city and the history of the nation. She was a wife to Henry Christophe, a former slave of Bambara ethnicity in West Africa who became a military leader in the Haitian Revolution that ended both slavery and the French colonial rule on the Caribbean island. He later became president and king of the then young nation. He was said to have deep knowledge of military issues, considering he accompanied the French to fight at the siege of Savannah at what is now called the state of Georgia. History says that he was brought to French colonial Haiti, then known as Saint Dominic most likely from Kitts. The French naval officer who brought him later sold him to Koidovic, who was Mali Louis's father. And that is how Henry and Marie met and later fell in love. Marie Louise was born into a free black family in Cape Francois on May the 8th, 1778. Her father, Koidovic, ran an inn called the Hotel de la Colonne. Marie Louise and her family lived in a house outside the inn. She went to school to learn music and painting and grew up a devout Catholic. She also read a lot of history books and learned more about the history of the island where she lived. When Henry joined her family after he was sold to her father, she became his close friend reading to him books about history and encouraging him to buy his own freedom. Henry worked in numerous jobs, including being a manson, a bartender, a sailor, and a billiard maker. While in the 20s, he managed to purchase his freedom and joined the increasing numbers of free blacks. By 1791, 
The slaves at St. Dominic had rebelled against their harsh conditions under the French and adopted the name Haiti for the new nation. Henry joined them in the fight and by 1802 he had become the Brigadier General of Toussaint Rovecher and by the way I'm gonna do a video about Toussaint Rovecher very soon. The great military leader who led the revolt Henry went ahead to fight alongside Toussaint Rovecher in the north against the French. They also fought against the British and the Spanish troops who, according to accounts, wanted to quash the uprising on the various slave plantations. During this period, Henry married Mary Ruiz, who had her first child, a son, in 1794, but they lost the son. She then gave birth to two daughters, Francois, Amethyst, and Anthenes. I don't know if I'm really pronouncing the names right. I'm not a French speaker, but I'm trying. And another son named Victor Henry. In June 1802, Toussaint Rovecher was captured by agents of Napoleon Bonaparte and was deported from the island of France. Meanwhile, the revolution still went on, and after 13 years of military battle between the slaves and the French colony, the slaves eventually gained their independence in 1804, making the nation the first independent black republic in the West. Jean Jacques Dessalin, a free slave who declared Haiti independent, subsequently became the emperor, but was assassinated in 1806 when war broke out between his generals. A short civil war between Henry and the Haitian general Alexander Petition divided the new country. Haiti, with Henry taking charge over the north and Alexander Petition leading the south, Henry was subsequently elected president and served from 1807 to 1811. On March 26, 1811, he proclaimed Haiti as a republic nation and he made himself king, securing the title of Henry I. My Louis was definitely to become the queen, being the wife to now the new king, with their son Victor Henry becoming the crown prince by default. They built their palace in Milton and named it Sans Saucy and were elected to be on the throne. My Louis was referred to in the royal almanses as the August Queen of Haiti. She had her own court and formed the Amazons, a ceremonial region of all women soldiers in honor of the innumerable women who fought and died in the struggle for freedom and independence. Mary Louise was so sure of having a dynasty in Haiti that would make her son, Victor Henry, the next king of Haiti. She never imagined that nine years after she was crowned, she would be compelled to spend the rest of her life in exile. It is documented that during her husband's reign, he improved the nation's infrastructure and was noted for the construction of the San Sosi Paris and the famous fortress near Cap Haitian called Citadel La Farielle, one of the greatest construction wonders of the era. He also built six notable chateaux and eight palaces in the region. Christophe was, however, criticized for some of his harsh rebel policies and later became unpopular in August. 1820. He suffered a paralytic stroke and when people got knowledge of his condition, revolts broke out. Fearing a coup and not being able to calm the situation down, he committed suicide and his kingdom became part of the Haitian Republic in 1821. Historians say that after his death, Mary Louis was nominated as a regent with her son Victor Henry as king of Haiti. But before she could start acting as a regent for her son, 
a mob entered their Paris and assassinated Victor Henry. Mary Louise and her two surviving daughters were able to escape to England in 1821, where they were sheltered by the abolitionist Thomas Clarkson before moving to Blackheath. Mary Louise and her daughters also stayed in Hastings before finally settling at the 49 Weymouth Street, Melbourne. In 1824, Mary Louise left England and lived in Pizza, Italy. There, she attended chapel services, helped build chapels, and took care of the poor. She lost her two daughters in 1830s and even wrote to Haiti for permission to return to her home, but was ignored. Mary Louise remained in Pisa, where she died in 1851 and was buried in the monastery of the Campchins Cemetery. And that is the story of the first and only queen of Haiti, Mali Louise. My name is Osi the Born Child. Thank you so much, brothers and sisters, for watching the African Diaspora News Channel and the African Diaspora News Insider. Hey, what do you think about the story? Please come down in the comment section and tell me who else would you want me to highlight. Until next time, take care. I love you all.